Hi. This is the third in the SDR Angel video series uh, and the second in the video series concerning ourselves with digital amateur television using SDR Angel uh, for both transmitting and receiving using the HACK RF1 uh, transmitter or transceiver on transmit uh, which is a simplex transmitter so it can only transmit or receive at one time um, therefore we need a separate receiver which in this case is the RTL SDR um, receiver version 3 which we're going to be using for receiving the TV pictures um, which is kind of ironic because that's what it was originally designed to do um, or at least the uh, the chipset so um, uh, yes if I had two hack RF ones I'd probably use one for transmit and one for receive um, but um, but they're not cheap uh, having said that the uh, the Chinese source where this one came from because uh, it's a clone is uh, is a lot cheaper um, than buying them from um, from the UK in their original form so today we're going to be looking at um, transmitting and receiving of um, digital amateur television um, except today we're going to be looking at using the OBS studio uh, software rather than uh, reading from a file which we did on the previous version so uh, here's a picture of uh, OBS studio which I'm using at the moment um, and ideally we should be able to transmit a uh, transport stream an MPEG transport stream from OBS studio and if we look in the settings and recordings options uh, you can see that there is a file output type and at the moment we're outputting to file we can output to URL instead so we can output to a um, an IP address and a, with a port so the IP address in this case is UDP um, colon forward slash forward slash 127001 um, and the port number is 5004 so it should be possible um, to create a video on OBS Studio output it to that port uh, we'd need to look at not an MP4 file but a transport scheme it, we need a, a stream sorry so MPEG TS is an MPEG transport stream um, and so with those settings it ought to be possible to transfer the information by pressing the record button on OBS Studio uh, the output would then be recorded not to a file but to the IP address and then we should be able to pick up the transport stream in um, the modulator for um, HDR Angel uh, and then transmit that data. Now I've not been successful in doing that maybe it's something to do with the uh, the video rates and the transfer frames and that sort of stuff um, as I mentioned in the previous video I've only been doing this for a few days so I don't understand a lot of this tech terminology or how the various elements would react with each other to prevent things working so no doubt somebody much cleverer than me um, can, um, can make this work directly um, but I can't do that, I've tried it and the audio stream comes through but the video stream doesn't come through um, the idea would be that you just press the record button that data stream comes out of OBS Studio um, and ends up in the in the transmitter but that doesn't work for whatever reason and uh, so we had to find an alternative and this has clearly been a problem for some time um, because there is a French, uh, French gentleman um, with the call sign F1 EJP um, who has produced some software um, which enables the transmission of that stream uh, through his software instead it requires two things this is my uh, my downloads folder and you can see here is it's a plugin for the OBS studio which is the OBS virtual camera and the OBS virtual camera does a similar thing to what we just looked at with the recording it actually diverts the um, the, the video stream from the screen um, and outputting directly to this thing called a virtual camera it's a bit like the, um, the virtual cable which can be used for routing audio around the um, around your computer if you're running out of audio ports uh, the second thing is the F1 EJP software which I just mentioned 
that's downloadable and that comes with a PDF with full instructions. Um, both of these things, obviously you would need to pick up the latest versions from the various sources and download them uh, freely available on the internet, easy to find. Uh, and you don't need any special licenses or you don't have to join anything or register for anything, they're just completely downloadable. Um, it is a little bit tricky finding the, um, the latest versions. So we'll have a look around. Uh, today is the 9th of November 2023. Uh, these were downloaded a couple of days ago. <coughs> and as far as I'm aware, these are the latest versions of both of those, uh, both of those files. So uh, Google is your friend. Go and have a look for those and uh, download them. The plugin for OBS Studio is just a question of downloading it, running it, and the next time you run OBS Studio, uh, you'll find that um, it exists uh, within the um, within the software. And when you go to settings, then you'll find that the um, OBS Studio uh, plugin for the virtual camera will be present and available to be used. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So now going to the settings tab, sorry the tools tab, you can download, you can have a look at the um, um, the, the virtual camera. Oh, I'm not sure what's happening here, I do apologise for this. Right, we're now going to open the um, F1 EJP software. Um, having installed the virtual camera uh, and started it running within OBS Studio, we now need to divert the video stream uh, through this software. So you can see here this is the window. It should come with an icon. When you download the program it says it comes with a desktop icon. I couldn't actually find that. Um, but there's a few things you set up here. Set up your call sign. The OBS virtual cam is already um, it should already be filled in in that field. The only thing you really have to do, well there's two things you have to do. One is to select the IP address and the port. Uh, and in this case I've used 127.0.0.1 and port 5004. Um, and the decoder. Um, and I have tried once or twice with different things and the, the soft one works best for me. I'm guessing it's um, it's requiring a, uh, a bit more overhead on CPU time. Um, but anyway, when you press the start button, you should find that the light turns green and you can see the transport stream is indicated on the IPTV output. Okay, IP is uh, obviously the IP address and um, the V I'm guessing is video, so that all makes sense, doesn't it? But as I say, this comes with full documentation in a PDF file, so it's easy enough to, uh, easy enough to find that. So let's see if we can now get that stream from OBS Studio into the transceiver as distinct from the file that we used in the last video. So we'll try and pick up some uh, the, the receiver and the transmitter first of all. And uh, so there's the RTL SDR receiver. Again remember to increase the gain to about 50%. That's always our starter for 10. Uh, press the DC button to get rid of uh, the DC component in the RTL SDR receiver. Change the decimation to 1 so that we get a picture of the full bandwidth available. Select the DATV demodulator. Um, set the type of modulation to QPSK in this case. Uh, it doesn't matter which you use, providing they're both the same on the transmitter and the receiver. Um, 750,000 is what we're currently using. Increase the bandwidth, which is about a, about a megahertz or just over, um, which seems to give the best results with this particular uh, settings. We're now going to go and look for the transmitter which for some reason has just disappeared. And this is one of the vagaries of uh, SDR Angel is that some things, <laughs> the unexpected happens and you just think well, why, why did it do that? Did I press the wrong button? What's going on? And no it's still not there. So we'll re um, get it to go and have another look uh, and still can't find it which is very very strange and uh, makes no sense at all. Why would it do that? 
So we'll ask it to reinitialize. Go and have another look. Oops, accidentally selected the wrong transmitter. So one more time. Um, oh look, there it is. It suddenly arrived. Now I've done nothing with the hardware. All I've done is accidentally opened a, win a transmit window and then shut it again. And suddenly the heck RF um, transmitter is source is available. It's a very mature piece of software, but very, very flaky. Um, very, very beautiful, extraordinarily well documented. Uh, documentation is absolutely fabulous, and that can be found on the uh, on the GitHub website. Um, but uh, it does have these uh, these little funny things that it does. So we'll pop in the um, the DATV modulator and change the settings on that to. Um, sometimes, yeah, that happens as well. You see that little double-ended arrow. Um, which just appears and which means you can't do anything you have to move to some black space or gray space click it and then come back and click again and then that seems to work so on this time we're actually using the UDP source and if you remember the IP address we set on the F1 EJP video um, translator let's call it a translator uh, was 125001 and the port was 5004 starting the receiver again we can see the constellation and starting the transmitter we should see if all the settings are correct that the clusters um, within the constellation actually cluster around the little plus signs um, the two lines here the MER uh, line which is the blue one seems to be indicating that everything is well and there we have a picture from um, the OBS studio which is the picture I'm obviously looking at at the moment and transmitting out to you guys and recording um, so that has now come up as a video source so we know that that source is coming from OBS Studio it's going through the uh, virtual OBS camera it's going through the F1 EJP software it's arriving at the SDR Angel uh, modulator through the transport stream so this is an MPEG transport stream which is the only thing that the, a the ATV modulator understands that's being transmitted through the hack RF1 transmitter. It's being received by the RTL SDR receiver, um, demodulated within SDR Angel, um, and that is now being displayed um, on the screen. And um, so that's all, all working very well. And um, I think we'll just leave it there for now. Thank you very much indeed for watching.